In this lecture we're going to be revisiting standing waves but we'll be using sound waves so we'll be considering when we get resonance and standing waves set up in air columns. Then we'll look at resonance in rods and membranes and finally we'll consider the beats which occur when we have two waves with a very similar frequency. This lecture covers textbook section 17.5 and 17.6. First of all, a quick recap of the most important ideas from last lecture. We saw sound levels were defined by beta and they're measured in decibels. They're given by 10 log to the base 10 i on i naught, where i naught is the reference intensity, the lowest intensity of sound that we can hear at 1000 hertz. We also saw the Doppler effect. We have the velocity of sound, the velocity of a source, and the velocity of an observer. And the frequency observed by the observer is related to the frequency emitted by the source through V plus V naught over V minus V S. This is for the case when the source and the observer are moving towards each other. If one is moving away from the other, then we need to switch the sign in front of that term. And we also saw shock waves happen when a source starts moving faster than the velocity of sound or the velocity of the waves in that medium. In that case, the source overtakes the sound waves that it emits and we get a shock wave like this generated. Sine theta of this angle here is given by V over Vs and Vs on V, the velocity of the source divided by the velocity of the wave, is equal to the Mach number. On to new material, standing waves in air columns. So the, these work in much the same way as standing waves on a string. We just add the original wave and the reflection. For a standing wave, a closed end must be a displacement node. So if we have a displacement node here, we have a maximum pressure as well. It's a pressure antinode. So that's because the particles here can't vibrate in and out, in and out, because there's an end there stopping them vibrating. If a pipe is open at both ends, then both ends are antinodes. So we have pressure nodes here and displacement antinodes. Now it's not obvious in an open pipe that reflection will occur and so you actually get a standing wave. But when this wave moves out of the pipe, it's like moving into a different medium because it's no longer confined around here. And so when wave moves from one medium to another, some of it is reflected. So for that reason, some of the sound is reflected and we, we do get a standing wave in a pipe open at both ends. In a closed pipe, the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency occurs when we've got a quarter of a wavelength in the pipe. So we've got an antinode here and a note here, so that's quarter of a wavelength. So in this case, lambda over 4 is L, or lambda is equal to 4L. And so the frequency of this first harmonic is given by F is equal to V on lambda, which is V over 4L. So that is our fundamental frequency, F1. Now we call the next harmonic the third harmonic and it's when we have three quarters of a wavelength in the pipe in which case L is equal to three quarters of a wavelength and so the frequency of our third harmonic F3 is equal to three times the frequency of the first harmonic. And for the fifth harmonic we have five quarter wavelengths in the pipe and the frequency of that harmonic is five times the frequency of the first harmonic. For a pipe open at both ends, the first harmonic occurs when we have half a wavelength. The distance, the shortest distance between two antinodes is half a wavelength. So in that case, the wavelength is equal to two times the length of the pipe. And the frequency of the fundamental in this case, or the first harmonic, is V over 2L. The second harmonic occurs when the length of the pipe is equal to one wavelength. And so we have two times that fundamental frequency. And the third harmonic occurs when we have three half wavelengths in the pipe. And so the frequency in that case is equal to three times the fundamental frequency. So now there's a couple of questions for you to try. What will happen to the frequency of notes produced by a flute, which is an air column, as the temperature increases? A increases, D decreases, C stays the same, or D I'm not sure.